It is important to note that the history of Brevoy is not that of one singular nation, but that of two disparate countries, forced together yet held apart over the 200-year dynasty of the Rogarvians, Issia to the north and Rostland to the south. The pirate nation of Issia began as a colony of the massive Ulfin Empire of Iobaria, which at its height stretched all the way into what is now Mendev. However, the colonization was not to be entirely successful. Though well situated as another port on the Lake of Mists and Vales, the land was cold and barren, yielding little in the way of resources. Wholly dependent on the empire for goods, Issia suffered greatly during the successive centuries of disease that plagued central Iobaria. When at last the choking death and the subsequent pogroms weakened an already feeble Iobaria, Issia was the first one to rebel, gaining its independence only to flounder as a nation. Soon after another bout of the choking death began to run rampant in the former colony, explorers from the Empire of Taldor arrived. Though it is not clear what purpose brought these Taldans to Issia's barren lands, they did not seek to join the country to Taldor, but instead helped the native Issians overcome their lack of resources, by teaching them how to take them from others. From this arose the five noble houses of Issia, with House Sertova above them, the king of the pirates. Unlike its northern neighbor, Rosalind did not have such a long, illustrious history. Founded in the latter half of the Age of Enthronement, Rosalind came into being as Taldor's fifth army of exploration made its way through what is now the River Kingdoms. Placed under the governance of Syrian I, the country suffered through a great number of brutal bandit attacks. Hot-headed and unfit to rule, Syrian I's pride made him take an unwise wager, win in a duel against the bandit lord or cede the nation to him. It was not a bet the man could win, but first believe himself to be unparalleled in the arena of single combat, having been all but exiled from Taldor for being too eager to throw down his gauntlet, and in mere moments the country was lost, handed to the bandits by his lack of skill. First disappeared, presumably in embarrassment, most thinking that he would never dare show his face again. However, several years later, first returned, bearing a new name and a new dueling art. Calling himself Syrian Aldori, he renewed the wager with the bandit king, who was all too eager to embarrass the nobleman a second time. However, Aldori made quick work of him and issued a challenge. If any man could beat him in a fair duel, he would give them a hundred thousand gold for their trouble. None ever managed to claim the prize, and the sword baron became well known as a peerless swordsman. He eventually began to teach his methods, and from this school the sword lords were made, who ruled over Rostland after Aldori's death for generations. Issia and Rostland existed side by side in relative peace, if constant petty squabbles over borders could be called peace, until the close of the age when an Iobarian warlord known as Karal Regarvia flew his army over the mountains and into Issia. The official histories speak of a man arriving on the edge of what is now Lake Raikal with a humble army of barely 300 men at his back, announcing that he had created a new nation called Brevoy, which encompassed the lands of Issia to the north and Rostland to the south. No one took the man seriously, and it was not until he sent tax collectors to the Sword Lords that anyone thought him more than a madman. Affronted by his presumption, the Sword Lord sent a small force after him, and, underestimating his cunning, walked straight into an ambush where he unleashed his Red Dragon allies. Seeing the devastation Corral had wreaked upon their neighbors, the Issian Lords bent the knee, declaring themselves his vassals. This, however, is nothing more than Issian Romanticism. Before he flew into the lands of Issia, Corral met with the country's king, Nikos Sertova, who ceded the whole country to him as long as the conqueror met two conditions, that he left Sertova with much of his power and his wealth, and that he bind himself to them through marriage. Nikos' daughter, Myrna Sertova, was chosen to be his bride, and Issia her dowry. However, when Corral turned his sights southward to Rostland, he found the Aldori sword lords would not be so obliging. The armies fought each other to a standstill, until Corral brought forth his most potent weapons, two red dragons. At the place now known as the Valley of Fire, his red dragon allies scourged the land and left nothing but blackened earth in their wake. The last great army of Aldori did not fall there so much as Char. And even to this day, people speak of spirits that walk in that place, lost souls who cannot recall the moment between life and death, where their bodies burned away. Roslyn bent the knee that day, but not all of it. It would be another few years before Corral would burn the fortress of Skywatch to the ground, rooting out the last of the rebellious Aldorian lords. After, he took great interest in the ruins, excavating the ancient observatory and eventually seeing to its restoration, though he did not see the project completed. Ten years after he drew Issia and Roslin into one nation, he disappeared, leaving his heirs to rule. House Rugarvia saw the completion of Skywatch in their forebearer's stead, though its purpose was shrouded in mystery. For two hundred years, Corral's descendants ruled the nation he created with an iron fist. Though they were hardly popular, no one stood against the Rogarvians for long and lived. It was a house posed to rule for an age. Until they did not.
200 years to the day of his disappearance, all of Corral's descendants vanished without a trace, and the gates of Skywatch closed. Seizing their chance, House Sertova used the blood ties through Myrna Sertova to claim the throne for themselves, installing Noleski Sertova as the regent of the Dragonscale throne. The other Issian nobles, eager to keep the politics of Bravoy out of Rostlander hands, backed the move, leaving the Aldori Sorlords to bend the knee once again.